crazy. Hey, look, there we go. I'd like to welcome you all once again. And welcome those listening in podcast land. You just watched me flap my gums for a little bit. Kind of like you listen, did it, had us do last week uh, for the entire show. When I mess things up, I apologize for last week. Sorry for last week. Now, Rich, uh, I've welcomed those on Facebook twice because I screwed up yet again. And uh, well, well, those, those are the are... only people that that may may or may not have watched our video of us That's talking. True. That's true. Last week, YouTube. So if you're, uh, yeah, I haven't welcomed you yet. Yeah. So uh, so welcome to our YouTube guests. If you uh, regularly follow our show on YouTube, Mike explained why we didn't post an ep- post an episode last week because um, it was a lip reader special. Yeah. And uh, but we tend not to post those. So. I will pose. I actually am gonna. If you're going, if we're not doing those games tonight, uh, I might sit up and, and do a few extra things tonight to get ready for uh, and get a bunch of stuff loaded for next or for the last few weeks that I've been missing on. But we got a good show for you this week. Um, we are gonna be talking uh, a bunch of news in Chicago in two separate segments. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm taking both those two top segments. Sorry, Rich. So you don't That's have okay. to talk about those two. Th- the 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 first two things we we're gonna talk about there. Uh, so that leaves you with the uh, last two. Th- th- the last two big okay. topics. So um, everything I have highlighted, you don't need to talk about. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll be talking Baker Mayfield getting traded, as well as USFL, and as as well as what happened in the Big Ten two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, all that and more, Mike. But, but first, well, first, what's the time to do? How was your week, Rich? Uh, you know, it was okay. okay. So um, it was a nice three-day, four-day work week. So oh, with nice. the holiday in there on Monday. And um, so, yeah, and um, didn't get to see the baseball today as uh, uh, my nephew's uh, Friday game, Friday night game got rained out. So he's got to play a doubleheader on saturday okay so we'll be leaving early in the morning for princeville good thing we're doing uh, the show early baseball. today or late tonight that's right um we, mike how was your week uh you know it was <laughs> uh, folks have i i don't know if i've talked about it on here but i'm a it, it's story time and i'm sorry i we're gonna we'll roll the intro in just a second but it's story time so late may I realized that my air conditioner went out. Just doesn't work anymore. Stop working altogether. That kind of sucks. So we called and trying to get it fixed. And then we called. And then the next day, my refrigerator broke. And then Monday, my wife goes to do laundry and our laundry machine broke. <sighs> it's been a week. I bought a new laundry machine. There was a tornado a block from my house, and uh, or a, a mile from my house, not a block, a mile. And uh, was it a tornado or a derecho? No, no, there was a. I'll show you the video. I'll send you the video. There's a tornado like a mile okay. from my house. It's a little scary. Um, there's a couple of videos. If you actually, if you go on my Facebook page, uh, there's uh, there's two clips of it, and it's. You'll at least you should at least recognize some of the the road that it's on. It's up on nine, uh, just up the street okay. from us. So, uh, over by the Elks Club. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So there was that. Uh, drove through that derecho to get the washing machine. Luckily, my house is built like a bomb shelter, and my wife and baby were totally fine uh, in the basement. Um, and we've been living in the basement for a while because you know no air conditioning um but no we're doing you know what we i i make that as it that may sound as a complaint but you know we are blessed we had the money in savings to not have to worry about paying for the fridge we had the money and we we had the money in savings to pay for the uh air conditioner when it finally gets fixed hopefully that's soon i don't know at this point Joy is a small town living, Mike. If we talked about, well, yes, that too. But if we really, truly did 
uh, if I did a full thing, I could do a full segment on just the air conditioner stuff. I'm not going to. And then we found a, a washing machine that just washed a, laundry, a load of laundry for us. Uh, for And I bought it the whole thing for 50 bucks. So I'm not complaining. The Lord is good, and he has blessed us with those those things so i'm happy i'm very happy as much as that all that stuff sounds terrible yes it was but we were we're blessed enough to have the money in savings we're blessed enough to have all the other stuff that we need we are not wanting for anything and with that being said rich you know what it's time to do mike why don't you go ahead and roll the intro Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. Okay, we're back. Rich, we had a poll question last week. Uh, Kung Fu fighting the hockey song, Be Like Mike. Uh, How did you vote? I voted for the hockey song. Okay. It's a catchy tune, tells a story of a hockey game, and I still hold firm that Be Like Mike is more of a jingle than a song. Yeah, I voted for Be Like Mike because everybody wants to be like me, right? It's me they're talking about, right? Whatever you say on that one, Mike. Yeah. Um, as a kid, I really did think, why do people want to be like me? But, you know, then I realized <laughs> as an adult, I'm cool. So that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so Kung Fu Fighting didn't get any votes this week. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I was probably the only person that voted for the hockey song. You are the only person that voted for the hockey song. I was not, however, the only person that voted for Be Like Mike. So yep. guess what won? With 75% of the votes, be like Mike. You kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to give a I shout knew. out to our those that are participating in our poll question. There were only two other people that voted. Okay. One of them you get to see well, tomorrow. Got a guess? Um, I'm going to go Ashley Couture. No. Josh Couture. Josh Couture. You got it right. Ah, Good job. Okay. Shout out Josh, and then Austin Shrepeck, which I would normally see on Sunday, but we're out of town again this weekend. So anyway, um, all right. And um, since we could, since and uh, since we did not have audio last week, Cleveland Rocks won our poll two weeks ago. Yeah. So that'll move on to a third round. This week we're gonna narrow down the racing songs, and we're gonna go with Hot Rod Lincoln. Versus Jerry was a race car driver, and I'll probably Jerry get that race going driver. live. Girls are going around. I'll, I'll get that live at. Uh, watch for that to go live on our Facebook page at twelve noon. Okay. Um. Da, da, da. Okay. See, Rich, do you see what's coming up next? Mike, is it a left turn? It is a left turn, and after that. Probably another left turn, Mike, and why is that? Because we're heading into the NASCAR corner, presented, as always, by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, on 5th Avenue. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia need, either in person or on their eBay store. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Rich, so uh, NASCAR, we're going to go two weeks back. Uh... We had uh, the Ally 400 in Nashville. I picked, yes, we did. Uh, I picked Kyle Larson. How'd he do? Uh, he finished fourth. I had Ross Chastain, who finished fifth, with Chase Elliott being your winner. So, uh, so at the end of Nashville, you went up 13 to 6. Mike, tell them how our drivers did at the Quick Trip 250 uh, up at Road America. Road America saw Tyler Reddick winning. Rich, you picked Chase Elliott, the winner, or the second place driver, and I picked 
Kurt Busch, who finished 23rd. I thought he was going to have a good week this week, or last week, because he actually did quite well last year at the same course. So, Okay, uh, this week we are heading into Atlanta. Are you so rich? You have the honors. I do. So Atlanta still is a track where it's kind of hard to look at and pi- and predict a driver because it's still a new. It's essentially a new track. Yep. With it being a repaved and them changing the bankings where it's basically a super speedway on a mile and a half track yep is that correct mile and a half track so i'm gonna go with the same guy that i picked in the first atlanta race and i'm gonna go ryan blaney so he actually ran pick. pretty well until he got caught up i don't think he got in an uh, accident himself but or i think he had a minor accident and just couldn't ran out of time to recover from it yeah um i'm picking kevin harvick you folks Look at this race like you do would an uh, an in or a Daytona or an, or a Talladega. They're running similar packages. They're running similar. Uh, it, it's a similar event at this point. Um, yeah, I would just. It's kind of a crapshoot, but good luck on that. All right. Um, before Rich. we get into NASCAR NASCAR news, because we still got we do have that. Um, let's get the fantasy NASCAR update real quick. Uh, Nashville was won by Dupo, who got 202 points. Mike, you finished second with uh, in, in Nashville with 190. I took third with 169. And at Road America, well, Dupo won again, getting 210. I came in third with 200. Mike, you came in fifth at Road America with only 117. Well, that's no good. Overall, I've still got first place with 32.97. The Funkhouse is in second with 29.80. Dupo is in third with 29.75. The Easers are in fourth at 29.68. And Mike, you're in fifth place, 26.51. Wow. Well, um, so... We're moving on from Fantasy NASCAR. Let's go to Fantasy or NASCAR Notes. The city of Chicago has an approved an event in for NASCAR next year. They've approved it as early as next year. Now, this is a three year uh, a three year endorsement. For them to have an event to be held in the city of Chicago and it lasts it's a three year stretch beginning in 2023 and it's going it it looks like it's going to be a road course like and yes. not just a road course but a Grand Prix street style street course road course whatever you want to call it on the city streets um. Yeah, that it. See the the letter that was sent was from the the vice president of uh, racing development and strategy. Uh, ben Ken- Kennedy. And also, it was signed by Aaron Harkin, commissioner and department. Uh, and and uh, yeah, either way, um, wow. So this is a high-level official from NASCAR asking for permission to have a race in Chicago on the city streets. And it has been approved. Does that get, am I getting my hopes too high? I don't think so. I think if it's gone this far, if it's gone this far, I think it's almost going to happen. I was, 
I was going to wait to put it on the show outline and talk about it until it was official as far as what, as far as maybe a possible date, what year it was going to start, what course was going to come off of the schedule to make room for the street race. But if anything, it's going to get eyes on it. It's going to get eyes on the, uh, it's going to get eyes on the TV and it gets them back into the Chicago market as they left it as they left the Chicago market when they chose to take um, Chicagoland Speedway off of the schedule and not go to Joliet anymore. Yeah. And in all fairness, I mean, you've seen F1 has done a street course race in Miami and the IndyCars have done Nashville recently. It, it, here's the thing. Formula One is designed, they most of what they do a lot of what they do, not most, a lot of what they do is uh, street courses, Grand Prix, as they call them. So, yeah, I'm totally, like, that's a normal thing for them. But to see NASCAR going this way, I like it. I'm a little nervous about it, but I still like it. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about it, too. I mean... I, I guess, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I would have rather maybe seen it done as an exhibition race with a maybe a lower a lower circuit first before throwing the cup cars on there. But I think at the same time, if the city of Chicago is going to probably temporarily modify and shut down more than likely Lakeshore Drive and maybe one of the other surrounding streets around there to make this street course, you'd almost have to put the top division on there. And yeah. I mean, if anything, if, as a fallback option, if it doesn't work as a total disaster the first time, they can always take the, the the next two years back to back the Joliet if they have to. I don't if think it they, just fails miserably, but I don't think it will. I don't think they'll, they'll make it work. Yeah, I don't think they're, uh, uh, I don't think they'd ever go back to Joliet because of this race failing. I think they they should and like I like I've been a proponent of in the years past what NASCAR need and I I think I've said it on the show. I think I've said what my thought is NASCAR has tracks and it's a 5-year program or make it a 10-year program. Every 2 years one of their one of their spaces that kind of is fluid moves to one of the other tracks, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Chicagoland, St. Louis, I think Iowa should be in there, by the way. Um, yeah, let's be Kentucky. honest. Kentucky, Kentucky was vacated. Kentucky. Uh, um, they talked about uh, putting Nor uh, North Wilkesboro. Wilkesboro would be awesome. I miss those races. That was a great race to watch. Stuff like that. That's where they need to do it. And then after the and, and those are those things. This Chicago race is more of an... I don't think it'll be an exhibition. I think it'll be a real race. But again, this is more of an exhibition type concept. They don't... Maybe it catches on. Maybe they do it as a permanent thing. But as a concept right now, that's where we're at. So... Yeah, is it worth the rumors that I've seen when they've talked about the street course is that for the next three years, it would take the place, it would get Road America's spot on the schedule. So is it worth losing Road America to put a race on the city streets of Chicago? Um, I don't know. Uh, I like Road America, but I'd love to see it in Chicago. It, it would be fun to see what the reverberating sound in Chicago would be? That's a, To me, that's the bigger Ooh. question. Um, do they make it make the track as long as like a Road America type thing? Or uh, or do they make it like, again, I'm not sure. Um, but that would be That would be my um, 
that would be my my go to would be like I, I want to know what the track's gonna look like. I want to know what um, I, I, I want to know those things before I worry about any of the other rest of it. Yeah, so this is probably a really developing story. We're probably it's probably gonna be back on the outline in a couple of weeks once NASCAR makes it official as well because I'm sure that hopefully when NASCAR makes it official they'll have a tentative layout of what it's going to look like I mean it could be the exact same layout that they did for um, for the iRacing series as they put together as they mapped out a potential street course for iRacing yeah um, as well I'd be interested in all of that. It'll it'll be fun. I think it will. It be a fun thing. Yes. But I don't know. Is it? The question becomes: Is it? Re, oh man, I don't want to be a gatekeeper. I'm not going to gatekeep. I'm not going to ask. Is it real NASCAR? If it's not on a track, I don't think that works. But we'll see. It'll be. I, I'm excited to see it happen. Speaking of Chicago, let's leave the NASCAR corner, presented as always by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, on Fifth Avenue. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs in person or on their eBay store. And let's head around the diamond as we talk Chicago Cubs baseball. Rich, how'd they do this week? You know, Mike, they went three and three show to show as we are not counting today, Friday night's game out in L.A. Yep. Because uh, we're currently recording during that show. Yep. Uh, which brings their overall record to 34 and 49. So, Mike, we both got it right. As we both said, they get three victories. Yep. Um, and they darn near came close to getting four they as did. they went to extra inning. They they almost swept Boston, and they went to extra innings on July 4th and just couldn't yeah. couldn't push across the victory. So this week, Rich, they have two in L.A., two hosting the Orioles, and two hosting the Mets before next Saturday. What do you think they're going to do? I'm going to give them two wins. I mean, they still played a really good game last night against L.A. They, they only lost by two. Yep. So they're keeping things close. So I, I think they can get two wins out of that. And it's the Orioles. Yeah, it, yeah, but we didn't do too well against the Orioles when we were in Baltimore, though. That's all right. It's the Orioles. Okay. Um, the All Star Game starters have been has it been announced? Yes, they did announce them. Okay. So your catchers will be uh, Wilson Contreras from our Cubbies. Uh, Alejandro Kirk is going to be behind the dish for the American League. He's a catcher for the Blue Jays. Okay. Mike, who are the first baseman going to be? Paul Goldschmidt from the Crap Town Poop Birds uh, for the National League. And Vlad Guerrero Jr. from Toronto in the American League. Second base, you're going to see Jazz uh, from Miami. And then uh, oh, your man. favorite player, Mike Jose Altuve, is going to be uh, at second base for the American League team. Can can I start the chant? Screw Altuve! Two. All right, one more time. Screw Altuve! Okay. All right, third base, the hot corner will be manned by Manny Machado of the Padres and Rafael Devers of the Red Sox. Yeah. Tim Allen from the White Sox. Anderson, sorry. Tim Anderson from the White Sox is your shortstop in the American League. Rich Huey and, and Trey Turner from the Dodgers in the National League. Your designated yeah. hitters will be. Bryce Harper, who don't. So I don't know if he'll be able to play in the game because he's currently injured. So Wilson Contreras' brother, William Contreras, might nice. be the DH, unless they name an, um, unless there's an injury replacement named, and then the manager gets to choose who the DH is going to be. Um, I don't looking at his numbers because I play fantasy baseball. I don't know if he's a deserving All Star, but 
that's what happens when you allow fans to vote and stuff the ballot box. Yep. And when MLB pushes it down the throat, vote Braves, vote Cubs, whether they deserve to be in the All-Star game or not. And uh, Shohei Otani will be the American League DH. Your National National League outfielders, Ronald Acuna Jr. from Atlanta, Jacques Peterson from San Francisco, and Mookie Betts from the Dodgers. I'm surprised right, this is – wow, time out. Normally we're – like, but Jacques, this is his first election? First starting not. Okay. First start not. Okay. I'm okay with that then. That's fine. Who's the outfielders for the American League, Rich? The American League is Aaron Judge, Mike Trout, and Giancarlo Stenton. Okay. The rest of the rosters and the pitchers will be review will be announced later on. Looks to be on yeah, on July sixteenth. Okay. So next week. How you feel about those? A little more. You know, I, I I'm okay with it. I think there's a better. I think uh, Xander Bogarts is having a better year in Boston than Tim Anderson is. But once again, kind of like with uh, William he, Contreras, I think the whole whoa, 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 pushing it, who pushing is, it down. Who is a better starting catcher in the National League right now? I said William Contreras, oh, not Wilson okay. Contreras. The whole, but yeah, with right. the whole, William everybody on. If you have the MLB app. I mean, you're getting a notification. Hey, vote Cubs. Vote for your. Make sure you see your favorite Cubs or your favorite Braves. Insert team name. Vote them. Vote them in. Yeah. I mean that. That's what gets pushed by by the leagues. By the league, even when you uh, listen to the games on the radios, there's that random ad. Make sure to go to this website and vote for your favorite insert team name players to make it. But I mean, besides um, William. William Contreras yeah. possibly getting a starting nod because he had so many votes and um, he's really the only starter I, I'm not really sure if I, I'm really all in on I think because Tim Anderson it I mean it looks like he's having a good year but he's also spent a good good chunk on the injured list too so I, I think I would have rather seen somebody get the uh, get the nod that uh, play, has played a full season that's all I mean, as far as starter, starters go, I think I like the American League team a little bit better. Okay. We'll have to uh, make that pick when it comes. I mean, I know who I'm cheering for, but I'll make a pick one way or another. Um, by the way, uh, speaking of picks and whatnot, uh, we did forget to mention we, – we mentioned it last week, but, Rich, I did pay up on my bet. You did get your, your br- breakfast pizza? Yeah, I did get a breakfast pizza for getting the uh, for winning our lunch bet with the Stanley Cup Finals, which saw the Colorado Avalanche win the series four to two. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and any... as long as we're talking about the the city of Chicago, yep. Did you have you heard what uh, Lori Lightfoot wants to do to Soldier Field? Uh, make it a historic site. Uh, no, she wants to put a dome on that thing. Because that's what will keep the Bears downtown. Make it a dome stadium. Is that what's going to keep them downtown? I don't think so. I mean, Not the... What NFL team wants a fixed roof dome stadium? If, I mean, every... Basically, in dome, I don't think there isn't a fixed... The only people that have fixed roof now are what Minnesota, or does yep. Minnesota have a, tr- a retractable roof? I don't know. I think it's fixed roof. I want to go. Okay. I want to go October 9th, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it because we've spent three thousand dollars in the last month. Yeah. So I think there's only two fixed roof stadiums at the, which is Detroit, Detroit and Minnesota. Everybody else, if it's a dome stadium, it's retractable. Yeah. I, they're not going to say anyway. Like, that's not going to keep them. So why make that? What? 
I don't get it either. I mean, I think if it's going to, if the, if it's get if the, if that roof or stadium renovation is going to come out of the Chicago taxpayers' money, they got bigger, they got bigger problems in the city of Chicago. Than they got they bigger potholes than the roof that they're going to put yeah. on, on, on uh, Soldier Field. That's dumb. Yeah, I mean, for me, as soon as they put what looks like a spaceship inside Soldier Field, that's what that's when for me, it kind of lost the significant. That's when it lost like that, that aura of we're gonna we're playing in Soldier Field. Yeah, it because it it doesn't look like Soldier Field anymore. Nope. It it never it hasn't it just looked weird when you drive by it on Lakeshore Drive. Really does it genuinely does look weird. So I mean I, I think I mean, they, if they completed if they completed that sale of the land out in Arlington Heights they're they're gonna play it it's just how much money they're gonna get yeah. from the county from the county and the city of Arlington Heights to build the stadium there. Yep. Okay, so it's just a matter of time. Speaking of NFL talk, let's uh, the the most basic trade that everybody knew was happening setting up the most hilarious situation in the world in which fans of their of one team are going to be cheering against themselves the confluence of events that is going to happen on the on the first game of the season between the browns and the Panthers. Ooh, buddy. By the way, look for the pant. So, Rich, tell the people what happened, because I've danced around it. You tell them what officially happened, and then we'll yeah. get into the funniness Baker, that yeah. is that first week of the, of the season. Baker Mayfield's going to go to Carolina for a conditional 2024 draft pick. Yep. Depending on playing time, he could, it could net the Browns fourth round draft pick if he doesn't meet the insane and uh if he doesn't meet the play to play in time criteria there there it's only going to cost carolina a fifth round pick so the so the panthers only got to pay him 4.8 million the browns will pay him 10.5 million to possibly play against them in week number one who who's gonna play who else is gonna play at that position in that town Are we talking Cleveland or Carolina? Carolina. Carolina, the from what I'm reading, it sounds like it's going to be a quarterback competition between Darnold and Mayfield. I think Mayfield gives them a better opportunity to win, but they're still calling it a quarterback competition. They all, they're only saying that because they're paying Baker they're paying Sam Darnold. It's not going to be a competition. Baker Mayfield's going to win that position, that job. He's going to be the starter for 90% of the season. He Closest thing to a hot take right now. You ready for it, Rich? Go ahead. Carolina Panthers make the playoffs. What do you want to bet it on? Bet on it. No, I don't think they make the playoffs. I don't know about betting on what it. What do you want to make the bet, bet on? on it, though. You you make the bet. <laughs> I'm putting I'm putting the, the hot take out there. What's my punishment if I don't? It, what's my punishment if I'm wrong? And what's my reward if I'm right? I don't know. Let, 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 give, give me a couple of ideas of, on what you would want to put up on on this. It doesn't have to be today. We can think about this and bring this back around um, to next week. Okay. Okay. The, the Panthers are going to make the playoffs this year under Baker Mayfield. I, I'm putting it out there right now. Well, they would. I think the only way they get in is with a wild card. I, I said they make the playoffs, though. So. I said I, they I know. I said they made the playoffs. I didn't say they they were gonna win the division. 
You got Tom Terrific. You think they're going to beat, they're going to win the division over Tom Terrific? By the right. way, that blue looks really good on Baker. All right, so I'm, I'm going to pencil in it right now. I'm, I'm going to put the Panthers in as one of your wild cards. You can do it. You can put it in pen. I'm doing it. It's there. It, it's penciled in as one of your wild cards on our NFL prediction depth. Now, it's not that – so, okay. We'll pretend that it's going to be a competition. We know that it won't be. We know Baker Mayfield's going to start week one. We know Baker Mayfield is going to be playing – the Browns and the Browns are going to pay him five hundred thousand dollars to play against them and beat him. Beat them. Is that game in Cleveland or Charlotte? Uh, let me look. Because uh, if you're a Browns fan, are, are you are you cheering or booing him? So that's if another thing. Well. There's actually a group on Facebook that uh, has come out and said basically said that they are cheering for Baker Mayfield to beat the Browns. And it's a it's a like a Browns Facebook group, a Browns Pro Baker Facebook group thing. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's yeah. Because here's the thing, though, even if the Browns, assuming that Deshaun Watson gets an entire year, year long suspension, and they're they're stuck rolling with Jacoby Brissett as their starting quarterback, and they bottom out and bomb the entire year. Texas get the the Houston gets their first round draft pick, yeah. so they don't even benefit from the potential number um, one overall. Yeah, uh, they're yeah, gonna they're Cleveland. They're gonna pick. actually they're Cleveland. What they're gonna do is they're gonna win two games, and the Lions are gonna win a game, and the Lions are gonna win the the first round pick or something. It's gonna be something stupid like that, or Miami. Yeah, I think it's, or. Yeah, I think it's a good landing spot for Baker, though. They're, it's great. Carolina's got a – if they can – if Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy, that's a decent – that's a decent situa- – good situation for him to be in. I think it it's a lot better Carolina, than Seattle. It is in Carolina, by the way. It is in Carolina. Oh, that takes out a little bit of the fun, though, on that. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen him play oh, against the Browns in Cleveland? Oh, God and get a win and see how the home crowd reacts to it all. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I'm I'm all for it and I you Yeah. This is what happens when you get overexcited and pay too much for a guy that's being accused of rape and sexual misconduct pushing out your good quarter your guy that's already proven to be the best quarterback you've had in 25 years probably more than that I guess the last good quarterback they had was Phil Simms no Phil Simms never played for the Browns it was probably Bernie Kosar maybe Vinny Testaverde but at least in the second iteration of the Cleveland Browns Baker Mayfield has probably been their best quarterback oh wait we forgot Brian Hoyer Josh McCown Brady ooh Brady Quinn no Baker Mayfield no. trumps all of these guys I yeah you gotta go back to the 80s and Bernie Kosar when they probably had a dependable Productive quarterback under center. Jeff Garcia? Nope, he wasn't. He was. He wasn't the best by the time he got to Cleveland. By the way, apparently Jeff Garcia is still playing football. He's playing for the Calgary Stampeders. Well, he came from the before he went to San Francisco. I think he was. He was a CFL quarterback. Well. After the injury, Robert Griffin, Robert Griffin Jr. the third. Yeah, but they got first I, injury RG three, not yeah, no, same, no, not not Washington Redskins RG three. Wow, I did not realize that both McCown brothers made it to Cleveland at one point in time. Luke made it there as well. 
Yeah, I'm not seeing anybody that can hold a candle to uh, Vinny Testaverde. It, it, yeah, I think you're right. It's too bad. It, it's really too bad. I mean, they could have avoided this entire mess of, I guess, I guess could they have prevented all this mess if they would have gone to Baker and told him, all right, we're not going to pick up your option, so you're you're going to be playing out the rest of your rookie contract. We're not going to pick up your option. You're going to be a free agent next year. Oh, and oh, by the way, we're going to go acquire your your replacement this year, and we're going to bring in Deshaun Watson. No. Could that have prevented this entire mess? Nope. I, I don't think so. I, I Yeah. Yeah, I just... They've they've browned the bed, and uh, yeah, yeah, the Browns have turned themselves like everybody joked that the Browns just can't get out of their own way, and we all thought it was a joke for the longest time. But man, the way they've handled the situation is probably the worst that I've seen any team handle any situation. Yeah, ever. I mean, uh, the only thing that would have made it, that would have trumped this, is if somebody would have ter- signed, uh, signed OJ after he murdered Ron Goldman. And oh, I mean, allegedly. I mean, he was exonerated. I'm sorry, he was exonerated from that. I should not speak ill. He did not. He. He. He legally did not murder those two people. But that would be the only way that anybody could do something worse. I this is the worst handling of a quarterback situation we, I've seen in my lifetime. All right, is it worse? Because we don't know the punishment yet. Is it worse than the Eagles signing Michael Vick after he got out of prison for being involved with the dog fighting ring? Now you're asking public sentiment, aren't you? I I, I, I think personally, closest, it should be that's worse. That's the closest comparable. You are that's correct. The closest comparable. You are correct. I think this is worse. Personally, I think this is worse. And if it's if the punishment, by the way, if the punishment isn't worse, I got some issues with the NFL. Yep. We're saying we care about murdering dogs more than we care about raping women. Oh, I understand that. I understand that a grand jury has said, oh, that's not what he didn't rape anybody. Yeah. Look me in the eye and tell me that. Yeah. Don't pee on me and tell me that it's raining yellow rain. Just because you can get out of something legally does not mean that what you did is anything less than that. We see it all the time, yeah. people getting away with things that they shouldn't. I, I Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's got to be more than a year. It's got to be. That's potentially what they're doing to Calvin Ridley for gambling. Legally, he was on the injured, legally, legally gambling, gambling while he was on, the injured, on the injured list and away from the team. Yeah. If it's anything less than a year, they're really gonna have to spin this. Yeah, I I don't know or, I don't know what or to take do a here. large if, chunk of money. I don't even yeah. think that would be enough if it was less than a year, but they take a large chunk of money from him. It's not gonna be enough. It needs to be over a year, at a minimum, at a year. A minimum. I think it should be. He should just be on the exempt list and never come off. If he was honest with the world about it, maybe I'd accept it. But the way he's been, no. Nope. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, no. I'm not didn't okay. Didn't do anything it. wrong. No. So, okay, Rich. Um, let's go with the, oh, let's go wait, with the quicker one. Wait, 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 what? wait, wait, wait. We forgot something. We're talking football. What was that? 
We're talking football. Yes. We got to make a plug. We are. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. So this week, uh, folks, we want you to join our fantasy na- football. We wanted you to join our fantasy NASCAR, but not enough of you did. I mean, we still we appreciate those that do. We're gonna keep pushing it. It's it makes it more fun to watch. And it makes it more enjoyable. You'll get a shout-out on the show. I guarantee you will get at least one shout-out on the show if you join our Fantasy NASCAR next year. Guaranteed. I promise. Mm-hmm. We will at least mention every person who joins. So there's that. But on top of it, you will be welcome to join us for that. But this year, Fantasy Football, we are live the link is in the description below. The link is in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. The link is in the description of the video on the YouTubes and the Facebooks. It's Yahoo. If you don't use Yahoo Sports for your fantasy, you're doing it wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. If Yahoo Fantasy Football is by far and away my favorite f- fantasy football. The easiest one, I think, to set up. The easiest one to deal with. It's where I want to have fantasy NASCAR, but we can't do it there. Everything else is there. If we go back to, if I can figure out how to do a best ball without having it a gambling league, we'll do a best ball NASCAR or baseball next year, but we, I couldn't figure it out this year. Join our fantasy football team, our league. Yep, join now before we got to turn it into a public league and random people that don't even listen to our show can join because the because they like the settings and the draft day works for them. Yeah. We're going to have a live draft. We're limiting it to 10 people. Get in now. I'm going to make it. We're going to have a post midweek next week where this is going to go on our post. If you're listening, if you're watching, if you're doing any of that stuff before Wednesday the... What day is it? Wednesday the 13th. When it goes live on our Facebook page, you will be able to join first. If you're not one of the first 10, you don't get in. Sorry. It's going to be a simple, simple league. We're going to have fun. You will get shout outs on the show if you join. One of 10 people. It's that easy. Yep. So there's eight spots left because we're, we're playing, Mike. Oh, there's only eight we spots count- left. Woo, look out. Okay, Rich. Okay, we made our plug. Football is done. We're going to talk foot. We'll probably end up talking more football. We're getting into mini camps. We're getting into OTAs. We're getting into those things. Summer camp is going to start here soon. We're we're a month out from summer camp, Rich. Are you can you believe that? Crazy. Like crazy. Uh, I'm looking up the Bears' schedule real quick to see uh, when they have their first preseason game. What, sometime in August? Oh, it'll be in August. Uh, not the one I want. Um, yeah, a month and five days from today the Bears play the Kansas City Chiefs like are you ready for that Rich for preseason no no I really don't follow too much with the preseason. I, I'm just saying we are a month yeah. and five days for preseason games month and five days for preseason games we got three of them then we start the season. So we will probably, we might start doing some football talk here. We might start doing some talk about some previewing. I think, and I'm throwing this out there, Rich is kind of getting it as I'm saying it to you live. But I think we're going to start doing some previews of teams that aren't the Bears that we might follow this year. We will definitely, one of those teams will be the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to talk about them 
in the upcoming month. We're going to do some previews. We're going to talk about some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses. Rich, this is your homework to start thinking about when we're going to do this. Pick a, you get to pick a team that you want to talk about. We'll probably talk about everybody in our division. At least give you a preview of their season. Kind of go over what their schedule looks like. We're also going to give you going to start working on predictions for other teams outside of it. Maybe Kansas City. Maybe we're going to start talking about that here soon. Does that sound good, Rich? Yep, we can do that. Gives us a little something more to talk about. But, yeah, All football right. starts in a month. So, yeah. Okay, Rich. Uh, speaking of football, and I'm sure they're practicing, and they got some, they got some corn-fed boys to go against, USC and UCLA both joined the Big Ten this last month. Two weeks ago, yeah, that news broke. The yep. two LA teams, the two probably biggest markets in the Pac-12, are jumping ship and they're heading to the Big Ten. You know, more exposure is always good for the league, I suppose. But are we truly heading for uh, just ma mega conferences? I mean, we're aren't we already there, basically? Yeah, we. I think they already. You're already there. I mean, the Pac-12, the basically the by next year, what the the Pac-12 is going to be without its two best teams. The Big 12 already lost their two best teams in Texas and Oklahoma. Maybe not best by records, yeah. but Texas in the case of Texas, but market-wise, they lost their two be two biggest markets to the SEC. Yeah, because I think they start playing 24 or 25. I think it is. Yeah, it's the way the league is there. The way it's shaping up. There could up, be more movement. There's going to be two. I, I I just and I said it last week and, and I'll say it again this week because you guys can actually hear us this week. There are going to be two conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC. And that's going to be your and it's going to be your national national college football championship league and it's going to be 25 30 maybe we'll do 32 maybe 48 teams total maybe i'm just spitballing here and then i hope they add relegation in that the last place teams from the conferences play a, play in a bowl game now I think all of the teams that play in the conferences will end up in a bowl game. I'm saying the last place teams should play in a bowl game. And that bowl game will determine who gets relegated the following year. I think it's a novel idea. I mean, who else is – who else that's not in the SEC and the Big Ten? Who else could – I mean – it's going to make with the way the conferences are set up right now, it's going to make it really hard for any for anybody though of those outside of those two conferences, except for one, to make to make the championship four because that's all you have for the bowl for the championship. Except for one, four teams. Go ahead. Who's who? Do you think that team is? The team that is kind of married to a conference, but not Notre Dame. Notre Dame was one of them. I think still could have a chance. The others, but they probably couldn't afford to have any losses. Clemson. Oh yeah, Clemson. That's the other one. Clemson, uh, Clemson out of the out of the uh, ACC. Yeah, I. Again, this is what I think should happen. Take your two conferences. Your big t call it the Big Ten. Call, I don't care what you call it, but call it the Big Ten and the SEC then have your have them play their regular season you play one game outside of a outside of any of the two conferences you're only allowed one game outside of the two conferences the rest of the games have to be in the conference that way every team gets their starter team their starter game western illinois plays uh, illinois whatever i don't care 
by the way, Illinois, if you don't if you don't compete at a level for which you deserve to be in the Big Ten, you're going to get relegated for football. And for this football. makes it makes total sense for football only. Yeah, for football only. Rutgers, if you're not playing at a high enough level, you're going to get relegated. But then you have teams like Central Florida come in. You have, and and here's the other thing. People are going to argue. Well, then what's the uh, what's the 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 committee going to be used for? Because the committee makes money, and the committee earns a lot of money mm-hmm. to determine who's the best team and who deserves to be. And those guys aren't going to give up power, and that's okay. Here's what we're going to do. Your top four teams from both conference automatically get a buy or get in. I would say probably it should be your top eight and do and then do two wild cards and then those guys get to pick a wild card and the wild cards can be outside of those conferences by the way. So you have ten teams. And then work out the buys after that. I don't care. And that's assuming that college football will go beyond having four teams. Oh, they're going to. Or a potential national championship. The billion-dollar industry that's going to be there is going to do it. But Okay, Rich. Uh, and then let's go to the quick, the quicker one uh, before we run out of time for the week. Uh, the Birmingham yeah. Stallions win the USFL title, and Fox makes a statement. Yes, they have confirmed that the league will be back for year number two with some possible changes. They have said that they will have they're going to play games in more than just Birmingham. That's good. They're, they're possibly going to be going to other cities to stage games at. I'm not sure if it would be kind of like a barnstorming tour to where both games will be where the all the eight teams will be playing in the same city from week to week instead of having the game in Birmingham. Maybe they have the game in, I don't know, Memphis, Tennessee or so, Memphis, Tennessee, or one of the other where the, um, or maybe in the cities, here's a novel idea, maybe in the cities that the teams are named after. Wait, what? <laughs> Why would you? Rich, come on now, that's cray-cray. Yeah, but Fox is looking for more investors in the league, though, so that they can possibly expand the league. So they don't lose more money? Probably. But it's going to be open. It's still going to be there. It's going to do, it's going to uh, compete with the XFL for players and uh, and viewers as they're going to be playing at the same time. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like I believe it when I see it. Like, I, I know there's committed to it, but, man, it's hard to commit to something a year out. Yeah, I mean, do you – are you going to see more games on – I guess, are you going to see less games on NBC and Fox and maybe more on <coughs> FS1 FS1 and USA Network instead? And and you know what the or biggest Peacock. thing, the biggest reason why they're going to lose this battle of the summer leagues? Or spring leagues? Why is that? Who is the XFL's number one uh ESPN ABC. Yeah. It's that ESPN ABC. That means that they will be on every sports center, which 90% of people get their sports information from sports center. There you go, folks. So, you know, it's good. I'm glad that there's going to be some diversity. I'm hoping that it'll be good. Okay, Rich, uh, any shout outs this week before we let the people go and uh, see them next week? Well, it, it was last week, but you couldn't hear him last week. Uh, so happy birthday uh, to Karen and uh, and Pam. Um, happy birthday, moms. And, yeah, happy birthday, moms. Um, as well as uh, good luck to the Brimfield Braves. Yeah. Um, Ooh, playing in their baseball speaking of, this week, I, and this I, weekend. Um, hang on. That reminds me. I got to look it up, see if they play tonight or if they play tomorrow. 
Okay, so tomorrow, tomorrow, the uh, the boys and the girls uh, will be playing from Esterville. Will be playing for a spot in the national in the state championship game for their division. Ooh, yeah! All right. I guess maybe one other quick thing. We don't have to spend too much time on it. Um, but the Quad City River Bandits and the Cedar Rapids Colonels get to play a minor league baseball game at at, uh, at Dyersville at the Field of Dreams site. And tickets are eighty five dollars and sixty five dollars. Man, that even if you even if you were a diehard minor league baseball fan of those one of those two teams, that still seems like a high ticket price to me. Yeah, for a I'd minor s- league baseball game, See, we're talking high A. These aren't even triple A. Teams. Yeah, high A. If it was the if it was the the Des Moines Cubs, I might be willing to spend that type of money. But man, that's an expensive ticket to go see them and uh, for the for a, for a single A team. I don't care if it's high A or low A. It's, that's expensive. But okay, May, if those two minor league teams. Let's say, that, what is it, the Royals and I think it's the Twins do Cedar Rapids? Just pay. If those two organizations put all their top prospects on that on those on the roster for that one game, would those tickets be worth it at that point? So you're basically you're saying mm-hmm. if it's a triple-A game being played by a, by a single-A team. Yeah. So, for example, the Kansas City Royals, they I, take sure. all of their best prospects and they put them on the on the River Bandits for one night only. I mean, and maybe send that team out 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 to the field of dreams. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say okay. no. I just, it's, yeah, no. I'm just gonna say no, just because I that's think it's still, ridiculous. That, if it's, yeah, that, that's a little much. If it's the actual AAA team, yes. But not moving all your AAA guys to single A. No, I'm not. I'm not here for that. Well, no, it's not saying that. I mean, you could have because some of your top prospects could be in Double A. That's or true. Or in rookie ball or or low A. So they either get a one night special game with with the River Bandits as our example. Yeah. But I still eighty five dollars is still a lot of money. I mean, again, for a minor league game. I would I would have a hard time I would have a hard time uh, I would have a hard time do it, watching it if it was the 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 triple A team even but I would probably be willing to single A no Okay Rich Are we done? Yeah, I think we are done. So Mike, so Mike, what do you want to do? I want to tell the people, if you are watching us on Facebook and you don't want to watch us, but you want to take us on the road with you, check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can find Rich and I. Just search for Balls and Six. Look for us playing. Look for us. It's the same picture that's on our Facebook page here. You know it. It's That's what you'll find us. Rich, they're listening to us. They want to see our pretty faces, but they refuse to get a Facebook because they don't like Mark Zuckerberg knowing all their personal details even though he knows all their details anyway whether or not you're on Facebook doesn't matter he knows everything but they don't want to pay for a Facebook or they don't want to have a Facebook what should they do uh, look us up on on YouTube I'm gonna As, get uh, videos get our, posted today we get our uh, yeah they get posted uh, fairly regular ba- on a regular basis so you can catch us our uh, the week in sports if you are on watching us YouTube. on that YouTube, but you want to join in on the conversation, we have a comment line. You can join it. You can be a part of it. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash balls and sticks. Join, like us, uh, make sure to follow us so you get the notification when things go live. That way we can, uh, and you can come on, you can make a comment. No comment shout outs today. We did have some viewers. I don't know who they were, but if you want to be a part of it, 
you should comment. Even if you just comment, hey, I'm here, we're going to give you a shout out on the show. Because we want you to be a part of it. Folks, thanks for listening. It's time to roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich. <laughs>